We're back at PAX East 2017. It's Clan Bowman today out of Avon Productions. I'm here with Michael Heald. Nice to meet you all. He's responsible for Wolverblade. Wolverblade, that's Wolverblade, right. Wolverblade, that's right, <laughs> absolutely. So, talk about Wolverblade. What is Wolverblade? I mean, we're at the Indie Mega Booth. It is an indie game, absolutely. but it, feel, it feels quality. Excellent, thank you very much. Yes. Um, you'll have to cut me short because I tend to ramble on quite a lot. So it's apologies, all good. Apologies up front. Okay, so Wolverblade is a side scrolling beat em up. Uh, along those lines of Golden Axe, that's the biggest inspiration. Okay. Uh, but for any of the younger players out there, I'll say Castle Crashes because uh, I judge the people here by their age right. and I say Golden Axe and they say, what's that? Uh, you mean terrible? but hold on, hold on. You got the younger cats here with the access to the Sega Classics collection on Steam and whatnot. Yeah, well, you think And, you know and that, on Xbox you know. 360, and yeah, yeah, yeah. yet you still don't know that? You're going to say, Cat? Well, Castle Crashes is the popular game of the day. It is indeed, it is. So, uh, for younger guys, there you go. That's the reference. So, yeah, but at least with me, you can sit down and say, Golden Axe, Final Fight, yeah. you know, Streets of Rage, things like that. You know like the that. proper references. Yes, that's I good. do. That's good. Yeah. That makes me happy. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, so uh, the difference with Wolverblade is that we're uh, we're telling a true historic, or we're, we're based it on a true historical tale. Oh. Uh, so as you may have gathered, I'm English. Yes. <laughs> and um, it tells the tale of the northern British tribes and their fight against the invading Roman forces. Right. Uh, and it all ties into a real timeline uh, with real locations. And obviously we've we've taken a fictional angle alongside that as well, but it's all anchored in real history. So it's got a real gritty undertone to it. So I would figure, I would figure, I would venture to say that his, his historical buffs would really enjoy this. Absolutely. I mean, we don't, um, we're not kind of forcing the history down people's throats, but uh, throughout the game, we've, we've got like a, a small, something we've taken from the RPG world is the ability to unlock story elements as you go along. Right. So rather than littering the game with too much dialogue and too many cutscenes and slowing the action down, as you go through, you unlock little bits of lore and little bits right. of story. And instead of that being fant fantasy based, it's historical. Right. So if the, if you're interested in that, what you can do is uh, you can go into the unlock segment outside of the main game, right. and you can read about the places that you've been to, the people you've fought, the weapons you've used, and you can also see aerial footage of the actual locations in the game that I visited. So. Wow, that's actually pretty fantastic. Not a lot of games do that no, nowadays. It's, it's different. It's different. So. Oh, it's definitely different. So. Talk to us a little bit about the game. Uh, talk to us about you know the mechanic, uh, some of the other mechanics in there. Is it straight up like all beat 'em up, as in like straight up final fight, or is there anything else, little extra that we can expect from it? So what we've done is we. I mean, I'm a hardcore old school retro gamer. I right. collect arcade machines, arcade boards, and when we started the game, we spent and this sounds crazy. We spent a year breaking down and analyzing the core combat engines of the main kind of the greatest of the side-scrolling right. beat and also the bad ones, to find out where the bad ones felt bad and why the good ones felt good. And that was like breaking it right the way down to the frame timing and everything. And uh, we wanted to, to bring across what we, what we thought was kind of like the best elements of those yes. and create a combat system that feels, and this is an overly used term, but visceral. It feels aggressive, right. it feels powerful. Uh, the game's quite bloodthirsty, but in all honesty, you can't put 100 people in a field with swords and it not be bloodthirsty. That's, this is you true. Know, that's part of it. And then that ties into another aspect of the game, which is the projectiles. So uh, there's always things around the floor that you can pick up and throw. Okay. So if you're like fighting off against three guys in front of you and another guy sneaks up behind you, you can pick up a saloon body part and you can chuck it at that guy, knock him down and carry on fighting these guys. So, you know, it's funny. It reminds me of another game came to mind when you were talking about that, in terms of like you know kind of the same kind of core thing. You ever played Dragon's Crown? From I have Atlas? indeed played Dragon's Crown. Yes. That's exactly. This is also what it also reminds me of too. Okay, that maybe like the rich 2D element. Maybe. Yeah, the rich 2D element and the the the, the scenery in the background of okay, it kind cool. of reminds me of that. Thank so you very much. how That's long? How long has this game been in development? Forever. <laughs> Um, I started out like five years ago okay. with the story and the artwork and the characters and I had this world built up in my head, but I'm an artist, I had, right. no, I had no way of making it. Now I work in the games industry helping indies out with artwork and UI and that kind of stuff, okay. but I have no technical ability. Right. Uh, and I, 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 well, in the trade I work under the name Fully Illustrated. Right. And uh, I needed someone to team up with. And uh, the guys at Darkwind Media right. are some friends of mine who I've worked with. We share the same clients and we've known each other for years. These guys are incredibly technically skilled. 
So uh, one of our shared clients said to us, why don't you guys work together and make this game? And I was like, man, if they'd be interested, I'd love to do that. Right. We sat down, we talked about it, they loved the idea. And then uh, for the past three years, we've been working together and making it. And it's been a match made in heaven because these guys are amazing. I mean, the oh, yeah, attention yeah. to detail that they put into the, tech, like the, uh, the development side of it is mind blowing. You know, we have so many little details. I, I have these ideas which I, can't think, I don't think are possible and I'll mention it to the guys and they didn't make it happen. They're just, it's great. It, they really are great. Oh yeah, so I mean, where is it going to be found? Where can we actually get a chance to play this game? When is the, I believe you said there is a target release window. Yeah, we're hoping for a June, July release window now. Right. That's, that's the, rough, the rough, I mean, the game itself is kind of almost finished now. So okay. The game's an eight level campaign at its core. The eight levels are complete, the bosses are complete, the whole the whole thing's complete. We're now at the polishing stage, the balancing, uh, like balancing the enemies and the right. bosses and so on. Um, and then putting like the final audio in, final voiceovers in and that kind of stuff. So we're on the, the, the last steps. Will there be DLC? Because I know that's a question that everybody has. Uh, we have DLC in mind. It will depend on whether the game sells enough for us to be able to do the DLC. Right. We're kind of broke. <laughs> we've, we've, you know, after so many years, we've not got any investors. We've always wanted to do it ourselves. So that's meant, you know, doing a hell of a lot of extra contract work to make enough money to get, you know, to pay us beyond lifestyle to be able right. to pay to allow us to spend time on the game. So right. evenings, weekends, and then as many days as we can get on it. So if the game sells well enough, uh, we have a whole range of ideas we'd like to add to the game and extra story sidelines and extra little unlocks and that kind of thing. So, so I mean, if there's a possibility to be able to shop this game around eventually down the line so we can help fund more things to do with the game, especially if the game becomes popular, like, I would like to ask, what company would you really like to work with, you know, in terms of a publisher? In terms of a publisher, um, I mean, we obviously we love the idea of a publisher because yeah. they have the ability to take you places that we can't get to. Right. But after we spent like well three to five years on something, invested everything we have into it, right. we're a little kind of scared of of giving away what small amount potentially of sales we may get. Right. Giving half of that away, that's kind of a bit scary. Um, there are a lot of people we respect out there, you know, like Adult Swim Games, people yeah. like that. You know, they, they've released some fantastic titles. Oh yeah, like Volgar. That's one of our, you know, one of our Volgar, favorites. Yeah. Uh, recently done Rise and Shine. Yes, uh, Rise and Shine is a good so, one. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, there, there are people we would like to work with, but we're also scared of, of giving away what little profit we, we, we may make. <laughs> That's understandable. So, we're working, what what console, what systems, what platforms can we find this on? Uh, we're definitely releasing on Steam, PS4, and Xbox One. <laughs> So what about the Switch version? In a dream world, yes, we will make that happen. I mean, we, we, we desperately want to get on the Switch. Uh, I personally love the device. It's perfect for Wolverblade because you can you can flick the controllers off and two players can sit down and play right. anywhere. I mean, that's I think that's a fantastic idea. I want that to happen. Uh, and what Nintendo are doing is, uh, while they've they've opened the platform up to developers to you know to step forward and, and present the games, and but what they are doing is is they're creating uh, wrong word curating that themselves, yes. and I personally think that's what's needed. So uh, instead of just letting a flood of everybody getting on, they're kind of choosing cherry picking what games that are best suit right. the system, and I think that's a good thing. Uh, and I just hope we make that cut, you know, if and we then, make it through. And so. then he said it's going to be on the Xbox One. Yeah. What about the Xbox Play Anywhere initiative? Was it possibly as going to be, you know, you can buy it once on Windows 10 or Xbox and get it for both systems? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're hoping to do that as well. Uh, we have spoken to Microsoft about that. Uh, th the guys on the technical side of Wolverblade are, they, they are kind of masters of porting games and working with various systems. So it's, it wouldn't be a problem to do that. And we are looking to do that, so. Indeed, so question, so one last question. Okay. If you had the opportunity to make any game after this one, you know, what type of game would it be? Would it still be in the same vein of Wolverblade? Would it be like a Wolverblade 2? Uh, or, or would it be kind of like, you know, the video game version of Braveheart? I don't know. Like, yeah. We uh, we leave, the, the story ends on a point where we've left it open for Wolverblade 2. Oh man, so it's an open-ended game. It's open to the next one. So, so, all right, so I was just wondering, because you know, maybe maybe you can make this next game like 16 levels in, and like, you know, you get, you get them to support it and whatnot. Well, basically, because the story's tied with the Roman invasion, right. um, the island of Britain was basically constantly invaded by different people. We okay. had the Saxons, we had the Vikings. Right. Um, so we could essentially take the story forward and continue it with other invasions. Because uh, without giving the story away, we can right. tie that in with the story. Yeah. Question, has the game been rated yet? 
No, but it will be an adult. <laughs> <laughs> you can uh, you can take heads off and throw them, and there's a lot of blood. And oh, so yeah. more than likely we'll be rated M. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, that's that's good. All right, man. Thank you for giving us the time. Thank you for your time. Thanks for listening. Yeah, Wolverblade coming soon, hopefully, like in the summer, maybe in June and July. I, yeah, I want hopefully. it. I want it. I want it. This game is good. Clint Bowman out of here production. We'll give you some more packs in the Indie Mega Booth later on. Thank you. Yeah, this is good.